What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Collider Studio presented by Saratoga Springwater. I am lucky enough to get to talk to the team behind the Persian version. Congratulations, your movie is just electric. I love the vibes and I love the depth and I have a whole lot of questions about like the tone and style of your movie that we're gonna get into, but congratulations. Thank you so much. It's All right. to be here. Miriam, you have to do this. Okay. I have a feeling you've been asked this a million times <laughs> thus far, but I know the Persian version. Our audience does not just yet, so can you give a brief synopsis of your movie? Uh, the Persian version is about um, a daughter who comes home to her family in New Jersey after her, her father is having a heart transplant. So while everyone is in the hospital, she's staying home to take care of her grandmother, and she uncovers a, a family secret and she's always had problems with her relation with her mother and in understanding what the secret is she retraces her relationship with her mother through several decades and realizes she's not as different from her mother than she thought job well done you had practice <laughs> didn't you <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about pinpointing the right I guess the right, I hate boxing things into a single genre because that is not what this right. movie is. So maybe the right assortment of, of genres to be right. able to tell this story because it really is a beautiful and very effective balance of comedy and drama in particular yeah. here. I really definitely want to make a dramedy. I want to make an, a great immigrant story. I grew up watching films like The Godfather or Namesake um, or Wedding Banquet or My Big Fat Greek Wedding. And I, I wanted to do something that was reflective of my family, of my culture, and that means both laughing, crying, all of the machinations of big families. I grew up with seven brothers in one bathroom. It's not autobiographical. It's like in the movie, nightmare. it's it's eight brothers. Yeah. In my real life, it's seven, so it's, it's totally fiction. <laughs> um, but yeah, I wanted to have something that could reflect my experience, my experience of being part of two cultures. I grew up between, I was born in New York, but I like to smuggle tapes into Iran. I used to go to Iran a lot, and I was a, smuggler of music into Iran, Michael Jackson, Prince, uh, Cyndi Lauper, because back then after the revolution, uh, Western music became forbidden and my cousins were dying from music. So I used to stick it in my underwear and just bring it across the border and I would emerge and the dancing would begin. And in America, we grew up struggling economically, but our communities always got together, um, the Persian community, and we would listen to Persian pop music. So music, pop music in particular of the both countries are very important and then the film ends with a Persian version of Girls Just Wanna Have Fun sung by Niu Shanur and composed by Rostam Batmangali, who's our composer from Vampire Weekend, who's also Iranian American and queer. So it was a East meets West as a way to end the movie on my favorite song growing up. So, I really and we girls just want to have fun, you know? I couldn't imagine a better way <laughs> to end this movie the two of you now I'm curious when you book these roles what would you say is the biggest difference between how you pictured your character day one and then who they turned out to be as you got to explore them more while you were making the movie and working with this ensemble yeah I feel like finding the empathy with this character was an, an incredible journey um, she's went through so much and she always felt like you know she didn't have a place of belonging in either countries she always loved both countries but she didn't feel like she belonged in either one she didn't feel accepted with her mother she felt like you know, she wasn't able to be who she was and be loved by her mother, that's what she thought. And so I think, you know, being able to do this with Nusha, um, it was an incredible experience, just like finding her and realizing it's okay to be tough. And the reason she's tough is because she's trying to understand why she feels like an outsider in her own family. There's eight boys and she's the only girl, so it's hard for her to open up. So that was something that, I learned on the journey because coming in, I read it and I saw so many layers to Miriam and then, you know, talking to her and trying to understand her and how, you know, she was. I've got on the phone with her multiple times and anytime she would tell me a story, I'd jot little things down because I wanted to just do her justice and honor her story the way that she wanted it done. So are you sure you did that? <laughs> I like, think I did. Yeah. I like, I hope I did it. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't mean to cut you off, Nusha, but just to follow up on that, what is what's like a seemingly silly detail that you wrote down that wound up being important to, to think about to to make your version of Miriam feel whole yeah. in this movie? Yeah, definitely that it was OK to be tougher, like her relationship with um, Tom's character who plays Hedwig. Um, she didn't want this it wasn't planned so I think it was really important in the beginning she was telling me you know it's it happened on 
accident. She had just gotten out of a relationship. She went to this party. She wore this incredible Burkettini Halloween costume, which was phenomenal. And, you know, she went. She, you know what happens when that happens. Exactly. Something okay. happens and it changed her life forever. Be and careful what you wear to Halloween parties. It could change your life. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that strong, independent woman who doesn't want someone to control her. She wanted to be able to do this her way. She was going to have a, a, you know, she, that's why she, her and her first relationship didn't work out because she didn't want to have to give up her life and her opportunities. And she wanted to, you know, live her dreams. And so Which I think. Which is similar to what the mother wants. But exactly. But wasn't able to do. So I think. It's also about women being told they can't do something and they find a way to be authentic to themselves. I think, you know, my mother's Nusha's character is told that she can't finish school. She has to get married and she, in fact, that's what happens. But later on, she finds a way to not only finish school, but to become ultra successful. And at every turn, they're paralleling each other's stories. They just don't realize it. Society has told both of them they can't be who they want to be and they find a way but in the process, they've kind of alienated each other. So it's about finding that connection through storytelling and through narrative. And I think you did, Nusha did, she plays so many ages yeah. in the film. It's very and, impressive. Yeah. I mean, I guess, I guess I have to go back to that beginning question, especially because you're playing so many ages. What, right. what is the biggest difference between day one, right. your vision of that character and who she turned out to be as you explored all those phases of her life? You know, um, this character, I mean, there's so many complexities and layers to her. And I think for me, really studying that and the psychology of what she actually went through, the traumas and, and almost when she moved here, some sort of, you know, like just disassociating for what she went through, wanting to start new. And, and she's so driven and she's driven by this uh, inner strength that she, you know, uh, pushed her to rise from being a housewife to a business uh, a mogul. But um, for me, it was just finding all the nuances and the layers to her character, why she does what she does. Um, why is her relationship with uh, her daughter so complicated? And I, I discovered a lot, and I had the pleasure of speaking to her mother um, and asking certain questions, which, you know, I didn't know. I was like, what can I ask, what can I not? Um, I was like, she might not tell you the truth, but. <laughs> <laughs> but just being so inspired by her, um, and I, I, it, it, it was, I think I just got to know her more and also my own mother because um, the sacrifices that she made and uh, like you said something earlier about I don't know, like we, we kind of always grow up thinking our mother is just mother. We don't think that they have a past and all these secrets and traumas and things. And I, you know, at a, maybe at 25 or something, got to know my mother on a different layer and all the things that she went through that I didn't know. So there's a lot of similarities and stories that ran uh, parallel. Um, and it was, it was, yeah, it was a great experience. <laughs> and I think writing it, it's like you, to put aside like the, this title of mother or father and think of your parents as 13 and 14 and teenagers, it was eye-opening and humbling, and I had to really dig deep and, uh, and push myself to think of things from her point of view. And that was really changed my relationship to myself, to my, my own daughter, to my mother. I realized also when I became a parent, men were just faking it. We have no idea what we're doing, but here's this little kid thinks I'm like, you know, you know, I know what I'm doing, but, and that really was also eye-opening to me. You know, we struggle so much. We think that we're born being mothers, you know, we're born with the instincts. We know exactly what to do. It's, you know, that's what society has told us, but it's not true. It's, you become a mother through the process of having to make the right decisions. And sometimes you don't always make the right decisions. And I think it's about forgiving each other and, you know, finding a way that we're just, we're, these are two women that have to understand each other as women, not only as mother and daughter. Speaking of that, exploring that in a movie probably requires the ultimate scene partner. And I always love talking about the value of a good scene partner. So for each of you, can you tell me something about the other that you appreciated and maybe helped you access something in your own character that you wouldn't have been able to without them? The amount of empathy and just when I wasn't even my coverage, I was crying during some of her takes. She's so open and honest and wears her heart on her sleeve and taught me so much. This was my first film. So I went in nervous and she was just a guiding light. Her and Miriam, I just, she's, and everybody, to be honest, there was every single person in this cast put so much into their characters. There wasn't one person who didn't respect someone's process or give them and there were so many first timers, you know, so the, the young version of of my mother is played by a 14 year old from Iran. Who's she's incredible. High, incredible. She's a incredible. High, school, high school student, never acted. She has a four page monologue in one shot. 
and you know young young Layla obviously is just eight years old and I think there and then we have new shows like a trained actor who's been in many things and it was a nice mix of people's experience but I think it was you guys all connected really well yeah. and I think we also spent a lot of time in rehearsal it was very important to me not just casting great actors but cast people who would put their ego aside and become part of a family and our rehearsal process although we didn't have much of it every day we had off we rehearsed and we changed dialogue and we made it more fun and more funny and more real and that's that was so important to me and i think through the process everyone got to connect with each other absolutely yeah Nisha, how, how about something for you that layla helped uh, bring out of your own character um i remember thinking this and i in the beginning we didn't uh, bond as much because we were in, she was we're in different scenes until the end. But I, I remember thinking, is this really her first film? Because you're such a pro. I mean, and I've told you, there was one night in New York that I was drinking, and I was like, listen, I need to tell you something. You're a star. You have the it factor. You're amazing. Um, and I genuinely meant that. Um, and same with her, just having these very complicated scenes, emotional scenes, um, looking at her and just seeing the genuineness, uh, I suppose, and um, just really she allowed me to feel and go there to those places easily um, and of course with the direction of Mariam and, and, and the notes that she would give it was it was it was it was it was really I, and I agree with you it's really important who you work with and um, to continue what Mariam was saying this whole cast like we all knew that we had something special and we were there's no egos we were just on the same page. We knew this was a special story and it hasn't been done before. There hasn't been an Iranian American, you know, immigration story with this sort of like, just, it just like I was saying before, it paints a really fuller picture of who we are as Iranians and we don't really have that. We haven't had that. And also the dynamic, it's like their dynamic, they're sparring amidst a huge family of men. And it's all the men also navigating their thorny relationships and how the brothers react. And that's also an important place the setting and the, and, the, and the tapestry of where they're having their scenes and all the men in the background is so important to feel like they're trying to, it's a chess game and everyone, you know, I think the, the scene, the dinner scene, you know, the lunch scene is so important because you see all the other characters who have small roles, but they really are setting the backdrop for their relationship. So you, you have a sense of this family. I was really impressed by how memorable the supporting ensemble is, because you have a really large group of people and I feel like someone could get lost in the right. mix, but like I knew every single brother. They're so distinct, right? <laughs> I mean, it really, and it's it's screen presence yeah. too, and it's, it's believability, not just in terms of the events of their lives that we're experiencing right now while watching the movie, but feeling the history that's right. influencing it too, and it's very effective. They're gonna make me uh, leave you guys soon, but, I wanted to ask about one specific technique you use, because I think it's one of the most difficult things to do and make work in a film, breaking the fourth wall. Yes. Having gone through this experience, and anyone can chime in on this, what would you say is maybe like a do and a don't when you incorporate that kind of storytelling in a script? Wow, it's, it is very challenging, like technically, and also to make it not, because it can be a distancing technique, right? Because you're talking to the audience. and it, But here I wanted it to be the opposite. I wanted it to be the character confiding in the audience and the character demanding their own voice. I always knew that it would be three stories from three women. I think what brought it is that in Layla's versions, that that technique is typically used in a comedic way. And I think in the, in the later versions, it's more to reveal the, the character's true deep desires. Um, I think we use it a little bit differently. I think it's a very tricky technique. Um, I was terrified, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I felt it, it, it was what was needed for the story. It wasn't just a cool technique that when L Layla stops time in our film, she sets the language that women or this character has the power to stop time and that that baton is passed through the generations in different ways because Layla is not only the filmmaker and the storyteller, but guess what? Every generation is a storyteller when they come to a new country and they demand that they stop time. And so that was, a t I knew that that had to be the technique visually for us to connect the storytelling generations in some way. Very, very well done in that respect and many. And I'll also just say, first film is just like wild yeah. to me. 
you you approach the role and things like that with such authority and i can only speak from my limited perspective i don't know how you felt doing all of that but it it makes all of that radiate off screen and undeniable screen presence i'm sure i'm going to talk to you again in the future same with you and you as well huge congratulations on the persian version thank, thank you, you so much for having thanks us. for having us to everybody out there keep an eye out for the persian version and for more interviews right here from sundance 2023 very soon